Welcome. We're on the red couch with Jaden Hare, television chef, food columnist, and award-winning food blogger at steamykitchen.com. You can watch her cook twice a month on daytime show, syndicated in 120 markets. Jaden has been a food columnist for Discovery Health, TLC, and for the Tampa Tribune. Specializing in modern Asian cooking, Jaden is the author of the Steamy Kitchen Cookbook and the upcoming Steamy Kitchen Healthy Favorites, coming in February of 2013. She's been featured on The Today Show, CBS Early Show, Martha Stewart Living Radio, Oprah.com, and Parents Magazine. Jaden was recently named one of the hottest women in food and also one of the best food bloggers on Forbes.com, as well as The Daily Meal. Jaden, I am so thrilled. Oh my gosh, I need to hire you as my publicist. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need my help. You're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Now, steamykitchen.com. All sorts of fun and easy ways to cook modern Asian cuisine. Exactly. I started the blog, gosh, about five years ago. And, uh, you know, when I first started the blog, it was not even to create a, a business out of this. I had no idea that, you know, I would end up on television or write cookbooks or any of that. It was kind of crazy. So it happened really, really fast. So it started with you overhearing a conversation. Yes. So how this whole food adventure started was we had just moved here from San Francisco. And you know, San Francisco is like the melting pot. It has every type of cuisine possible. And so we moved to Bradenton, Florida. And um, I was picking up my to-go order at a restaurant called Bangkok, Tokyo. And while I was waiting, I, I, some, a lady was at the sushi bar, sitting at the sushi bar, and I overheard ta her talking on the cell phone saying, oh, meet me, um, I'm having sushi at the Chinese restaurant, meet me here for lunch. And I was like, wait a second, Bangkok, Tokyo, that we're, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. What is going on? So, um, you know, I told my husband the story, and he's like, oh, okay, well, Let's do something about it. So, and you know, I, I really, um, really thought hard, long and hard about. Okay, what am I going to do about this? Because this could really, really bother me. This, you know, um, where did I move to? From San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Francisco to Bradenton, Florida. What, you know, <laughs> where did I move to? And I decided to start um, teaching cooking classes, Asian cooking classes, at a um, small cooking school in town. And I called them up and I asked them, hey, can I teach cooking classes? You know, I'm, I'm an excellent cook. I can teach my mom's recipe. But more importantly, I would love to teach people the difference between Thailand and China and mm. Korean and, and Japan and, and all the different types of nuances of Asian cuisine. So people often lump everything together as it's just Chinese food. Yeah, or... it, it, Chinese food or Japanese food. And, and that's okay as long as, actually, to me, that's okay as long as they are really enjoying it. But, you know, while I can, while I have the, you know, the ability to teach people, and, and, and it's, it's like this. If you were going to an Italian restaurant, you would never say, I'm, I'm at a French restaurant. You would never get the two mixed up. Right. You wouldn't say European. I'm, I'm going to a European restaurant. Exactly. It would be Italian restaurant. But we're not quite there yet in terms of, um, you know, uh, being able to really, really differentiate um, China away from the word Asian. So in a lot of what I do, I use a language that most people are used to. I say Asian because mm -hmm. it is. But again, you know, hopefully one day we'll, we'll get away from the, using the word Asian. We'll say specific Laotian or Cambodian. Right, right. Now, when you first grew up in Nebraska. Yes. Wow. Is that crazy? <laughs> yes, it is totally crazy. <laughs> well, I, I was born in Hong Kong. Okay. And um, my dad uh, went to college in Nebraska and stayed there. And, you know, we decided to move there. I moved from Hong Kong to Nebraska when I was four years old. And that was a massive culture shock. So in a way, you know, you can imagine um, growing up in the late 70s in the mm. North Platte, Nebraska, mm. and being Asian was very difficult. Yeah. So what what specific types of things happened to you as a as a child oh, in Nebraska? It was, it was horrible. I mean, it, it you know being the only Asian kid in the whole entire school, I got teased quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I got teased a lot. Yeah, and your mom didn't speak English very well when you first came, and so how did she use cooking 
to help her? Actually, it's kind of funny. Um, so we moved, we moved to Nebraska, and she didn't speak a lot of English. And all of her friends, she connected with her friends through food. So they would teach her how to make apple pie and pot roast and steak. And in turn, she would teach them how to make fried rice and egg rolls and some of the Chinese favorites. So that you know, with that's how she learned English, and that's how she made friends. Wow. And um, it's amazing. It's amazing how how well she kind of fit in the community w with food. Yeah, I mean, food is such a nice way to connect with people. It's such a, it's such a, it's like a gift yes. that you offer people. Yeah, and it's wonderful cooking together and eating together. Yeah. Maybe not as fun cleaning together. <laughs> That's a totally different story. <laughs> Although you even make cleaning fun. I don't know. You have dance parties when you clean. We turn up the music. My kids help. We do all sorts of fun things. So this steamykitchen.com yes. is, it started, and it, it's very unusual to have the word, it was five years ago, the word blog and the word business yeah. in the same conversation. Yeah, you, within maybe like three months of starting the blog, I realized like, I'm having so much fun. I, I need to figure out a way that I can turn this into a business that supports my family because how much fun would it be to spend all day thinking about food <laughs> and cooking food and feeding people? That would be awesome. So I actually wrote a business plan out and wrote it all out, typed it all out, and then just read it back to myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, this sounds so boring. I you know, this this is not inspiring at all. This is like just a traditional words on paper. Business plan. Exactly. Okay. And so I threw the business plan away and started over. And instead I'm a very visual person. So words on paper don't really inspire me as much as pictures do. Mm -hmm. So um, I got a stack of magazines, went through them and made and got a giant poster board and basically made a dream board. And that became my business plan. Framed it, hung on the wall, and the most inspiring business plan ever, ever, ever was hanging on my wall. And every day I walked in my office, looked at that business plan, and I remember exactly how I wanted to feel, how mm. I wanted my family to feel, and how I wanted people who came to my site to feel. And a lot of words around gratitude, fun, happy, easy, simple, fresh. So um, still to this day, I still don't have a formal written business plan. <laughs> wow. This sounds way happier. Yes. And much more fun and yeah. much more accessible. I think a lot of people, when they're wanting to start a business, they get really hung up on the little details of the business plan that, in reality, don't really matter as much as being inspired or just taking action and moving towards something. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, a lot of people can get really hung up on, oh, I gotta get this business plan done. This section three point two point six. I need it. You know, I need to write this out before I can start my business. Now, you taught yourself quite a bit. You taught yourself how to do food photography. Yeah. And how did you do that? You did that in quite a fun way as well. I did. Um, I, I love, um, I think one of my gifts is being able to master skills very, very quickly. And I've kind of developed my little formula of how I do this. Thank goodness for YouTube. I have, I have education, I have a diploma from University of YouTube because I've learned <laughs> so much from watching videos. But I do my research online and, you know, in terms of like food styling and food photography, I would just flip through magazines and say, oh my God, what makes this dish look so delicious? And I would really analyze. I'm like, why did they put this, this piece of cilantro there and not here? Why did they turn the plate this way? Why is the lighting um, coming from this side and not that side? So, you know, analyzing all of that and you know, when I taught myself how to be on television, how to cook on television, I would just watch TV and find my favorite, very favorite people that I really admired on television mm -hmm. and uh, watch them and just say, wow, you know, I love the way Rachel Ray is always so happy and makes people feel so great. What is it about her specifically that I can, I, you know, I can also adopt in my repertoire? I love it. I love it. It's so fun. <laughs> I've watched so many things that you've done, and you make it all so happy and so easy looking, like something Thank that you. I would normally steer away from. But I want to back up just for a second. Yeah. Before, before you started living this incredible life and creating your life the way you wanted it, how were you living then, and how are you compared to how are you living now? Well, you know, funny thing, Steamy Kitchen grew so fast. Within six months of starting the blog, I got a book offer. Yeah. And within, you know, 
even before that, I was on. Te I started being on television already, and things just started happening so fast that I was like, "Oh my gosh! Okay, I want to build this, you know, massive brand. I want this company to be, this business to be as big as it can. And I have dreams of being on the Food Network and having my own show. And so for a while, I was really going on that path. I. I, I would go, I would travel to New York twice a month for wow. meetings, for press. Um, I met with executives at the Food Network. I, I you know, and I came back, uh, it was probably like two years ago, I said to my, to my husband, Scott, if everything is so awesome and if we are hitting all these things that I had set out to hit, business-wise and revenue-wise, why am I so unhappy? And we really had to look and take a look back at, okay, are we um, living our life and building this business because of, um, are we being ego driven? Numbers, revenue, building a big brand, or can we live our life a little bit differently and still have, and still be able to have Steamy Kitchen as a family business, but um, make it more love driven and family driven? Mm -hmm. And that's when it just hit me like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that, that, you know, just such a change in thinking going from ego driven to family driven changed our life so much and so we started transforming the business so that we weren't trading time for money because it was really time with the family is something so precious that you cannot buy more of mm -hmm. you cannot trade mm -hmm. you you know so we st we started thinking of ways to um, make more money doing less work and that meant driving up more traffic to the website that meant creating products like more books getting royalties from books and um, coming up with a set of steamy kitchen products that we could sell uh, and partner with someone to sell versus you know me traveling around and, and my schedule revolves around other people's schedule now it's so amazing because my family's involved in every part of the business our um, I like to say that our executives meetings are at the dinner table I have two boys they're eight and nine and a half my husband myself and we sit down we have dinner and we have meetings and we talk about what are we going to write about what's the next what's the next topic going to be about um, that how did we do last month how did you know how we how do we want to do um, this coming month what was fun what worked what didn't and it's just so much more fun that way so you went from having kind of too much work, too busy a schedule, too little time with your kids, because they weren't traveling with no, you. No, they have school. I get in trouble <laughs> from the teachers. They don't like it when I, when I take the kids out with me. Right. Yeah. So you switched, you just shifted and transformed your whole way of working. So that the business worked for the family. Yeah. Instead of the family working for the business. Mm, mm -hmm. Or back then it was me working for the business. It was all me. Right. Yeah. So now when you're sitting at the table or your boys come home from school mm -hmm. and they help think of recipes and they everything, do. they're part of it. They've been on television many times. They cook on TV with me. Um, you know, they'll help think of recipes. They'll tell me, Mom, no, nah. <laughs> you, you got to keep testing this recipe. It's not quite good enough. Uh, you know, having chickens and taking care of the chickens in the garden, that's, that, they help me totally with that. And uh, they want to start writing for the, the site again. Wow. So, that's so fun and it's yeah. so nice. Now, when you have people over, f guests, family, yes. whatever, they help. Right? They, they help do. cook. Um, I, I love feeding people, but more importantly, I love just the whole interaction, the energy that is involved in creating a meal together mm. as, as a family and as you know, friends getting together. So when my friends come over to dinner, they, they know that they're coming in the kitchen to help me. You hand them a spoon. Yeah, here. <laughs> this is your job. And even the kids, the small kids, they'll come in the kitchen. I have specific jobs for the kids. I've got specific jobs for the adults. I've got specific jobs for once we get to the tables, a lot of the meals that we have are we'll cook together at the table. Like think of it like if you ever had fondue before, like everyone yeah. cooks together at the table. Well, uh, there's Korean barbecue. Everyone cooks together. Mm. There's Chinese fondue, which is called hot pot. There's Japanese hot pot there's we make sushi together at the table we make um, Vietnamese spring rolls together so a lot of the meals that we have it's more than just me feeding people it's you know we're we're interacting and we're creating together so when you create together when you involve kids and yeah. when you involve all the different people what does that do for the people who are involved they that love it they love coming to our home it's we live on um, five acres 
out in, in Manatee. And we have just a gorgeous, gorgeous property. And it's very peaceful and it's very nurturing. So everyone loves coming over. Mm -hmm. And you have a fully stocked pond for yes. fishing. The kids can go <laughs> fishing and there's- Get your eggs um, from the chickens. We got eggs, we got a garden. There's, there's a lot to do. It's really fun.